I am super excited to share this tutorial with you. To make this dress, I used the yoke pieces from Children's Corner Jamie pattern. Then I tore one big piece of fabric for the skirt. It was the entire width of the fabric, and my fabric is 60 inches wide, and I wouldn't use any fabric that was smaller than that since it's being smocked. And I tend to like my plates around two and a half times or so, which means a 60 inch wide piece of fabric is good to adjust circumference of 24 inches or something like that. So to start, you'll cut two yoke fronts on the fold as well as two yoke backs on the fold. If you are using gingham or some other fabric that warrants matching up, be cautious of lining up the design as you cut out. I also did a spring sort of Easter version if you will and that was much easier to sew since I didn't have to worry about matching things up. Just a word to your mother, especially if you're a beginner. And then I cut a slit for my length. Remember the width is from one selvage edge to the other. I did include about a four inch hemline in this length. I like a wide hem. I think it looks pretty and stocky if you will. I'd like to say that it's also a practical way to lengthen the dress so the child can wear it for longer, but come on. I just keep making dresses, so that's not really a thing. <laughs> Anywho, you'll also have two sleeves. And again, be cautious how you cut your fabric if you have stripes or something like that. They should line up at the shoulder seams and waistline and all that goodness. You also have four collars to cut out if you want a collar on the dress. So to construct the yoke area, you'll have your yoke front pieces across from each other. So you'll have your yoke front and a yoke front and your yoke back pieces across from each other. So you'll have a yoke back and a yoke back. And you can attach all of these at the shoulder seams with right sides together using 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you have all those shoulder seams sewn, you can iron the seams open and you'll have one big circle with a yoke front, a yoke back, a yoke front, a yoke back. And then you can fold the yoke piece back pieces onto themselves and place the yoke front pieces together like so. And this will give you a finished folded edge along that center back. And then I matched the shoulder seams together and gave that assembly a good ironing. So since I used gingham, I pleated this by hand and I have a detailed video on how to do that that I'll link below. When I made this other version, I pleated that on my pleater and I also have a detailed version on how to use a pleater that I'll link below. I also have a video on how to pleat by dots if you don't have a pleater and I will link that below. I know, so many videos. <laughs> Anywho, pleat your fabric using whatever method you wish. Then you can take some freezer paper. I think this stuff is my favorite discovery in sewing. It's so useful for smocking and applique work. So I tore off about a two foot section or so. You'll want this piece to be big enough for the entire dress. You'll see what I mean as I continue. So to begin, I trace the yoke front so I would know the width that I'm trying to match my pleats up to. And I transferred the seam allowance too. Then I grabbed the bubble front piece so I could trace the armhole curve. I matched it up to the seam allowance and traced around that curve of the armhole. And then I repeated the same thing to the other arm, tracing around the curve so I could transfer it to my pleated fabric. Then I grabbed the bubble back piece so I could line it up and trace that armhole curve. And again, I transferred the seam allowance too. This helps in aiding lining things up correctly. I repeated the same thing to the other side and then I was ready to trace the yoke back. I took the yoke back pattern piece and traced the width and down the back of each piece including the lap section. I hope all this is making sense. This tracing onto the freezer paper is going to allow me to transfer all those curves onto the pleated fabric and keep it continuous. Just keep watching if things are confusing. I promise I will connect the dots for you. So then I cut this template out using some craft scissors. Notice I'm cutting along the chest seam. I'm not going to include the yoke sections. If you want to double check that things line up, you can line your yoke pieces to make sure you haven't gone crazy. Don't worry, I lined it up for my own sake too. Then you can take your pleated fabric and pull out a few pleats on either end to allow for a seam allowance. I tied these threads off in groups of twos or threes. If you did hall spaces, I would only tie off in groups of twos. Once I pull out a couple pleats from the other side, again for the seam allowance, then I have one big piece of pleated fabric. I pinned my freezer paper template to my blocking board. This board has come in handy over and over again. I know it's pricey, but it is really helpful. If it's too much to buy, I'd investigate making one. Anywho, 
So then I turned under the selvage edge of the right side of the garment since the right side will be going over the left side of the placket later on. And then I lined up that edge with the edge of the template and pinned the fabric in place. Then I lined up the other side of the template and pinned that fabric in place. And I tied off those threads in groups of twos or threes. And at this point, it doesn't matter where the pleats are, you're just concerned with the width of the fabric. Once you get the width of the fabric secured by tying off the other end of the pleats, then you can work on evenly distributing the pleats. I find that it takes a few passes of moving the pleats little by little. I sort of fan them out, if you will, until they look evenly distributed to me. Then you can put your freezer paper template on top of your pleated fabric. You'll want to put the template with waxy side down, touching your fabric. This means that the paperish side will be facing up, away from your fabric. I pinned this in place as best I could. You can see that actually I got off a little bit with keeping things straight and square with this template, but that's okay since the bigger picture of using this template is to keep your pleats in place so you can take your pleated fabric to your sewing machine and zigzag around those curves. You'll want to use a smaller zigzag since you want a few stitches into each pleat to make sure everything is held nicely in place. If the freezer paper starts to come loose, just give it another ironing. At this point, if you don't have gingham, I would do your smocking on your pleated fabric. If you do have gingham, you can trim just inside those zigzags. So if you trim now, basically what I'm trying to say is that you risk those pleating threads um, coming loose. But if you have gingham, gingham's going to show you where to to do your pleating and the bottom pleating threads are going to stay together so your pleats will stay together. If you don't have gingham, I would do your smocking now. Also, if this is, is too much, I would just do your smocking now as well. Um, the safer than sorry route is to do your smocking now and then to cut out just outside the zigzags once the smocking is done. Oh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if any of the frizz paper is coming loose, just give another ironing before matching up the yoke front and back to the appropriate skirt section. Personally, I like to sew through the paper. It gives another layer of security, if you will. It just keeps everything really, really nice and in place. So this would be the time to attach piping if you like. I added piping to this Easter springtime version, but honestly, I forgot to add it to this Christmas version. <laughs> if you add piping, then you can remove the freezer paper after sewing. Otherwise, if you skip the piping, you can remove the freezer paper after you sew the yoke pieces to the skirt sections. If you decide to sew through the freezer paper as I'm showing, then you'll have to tear the paper since it won't rip through the seams. Okay, now I can move on to the collar. And the collar for CC Jamie is designed for use with piping. And luckily, I didn't forget it here. I trimmed the piping down to a quarter inch since the pattern allows for a quarter inch seam allowance. This makes it easy to maintain the seam allowance. Removes your guesswork, if you will. So after I touch the piping, I clipped those curves and matched up the other collar and sewed the two together with right sides together. Then I clipped the curves again, turned it right sides out, and gave everything an ironing. I repeated the same process to the other collar so I could attach both collars to the neckline. I started to pin the collar to the neckline to the center front. You'll want to make sure the collar edges are touching. A gap here does not look the best. <laughs> Sometimes I actually zigzag the collar edges together before pinning. It kind of just depends on my mood, but that provides some little basting stitch, if you will, that I'll take out later on. Anywho, you can baste the collar to the neckline, then you can fold the lining on the top so the right side of the lining is touching the right side of the collars, and then you can sew across the entire neckline. Next, I clip the curves and then I understitch the neckline. If you aren't familiar to understitch, you'll place both raw edges from the seam underneath the lining part. Then you'll sew right next to the neckline seam on the lining side. These stitches will help the lining from peeking out as your garment is being worn. Once you are done understitching, you can iron the raw edges of the lining pieces up about a half an inch. This fold will be used to enclose those seams, and I like to save all this hand sewing for later on. Then I pushed the corners out and gave the whole neckline a really good ironing. So then I moved on to the sleeves. And when I cut the sleeves out, I like to put two clip marks on the back of the sleeve and one clip mark at the center of the sleeve and one clip mark at the front of the sleeve. On the bottom of the sleeve, I sewed two rows of gather stitches starting about one inch in from each of the edge of the sleeve and ending about one inch before getting to the other edge of the sleeve. 
Then I also added two rows of gallery stitches on the sleeve top in between the front and back clip marks. And then I took a two inch wide bias strip of fabric and cut two pieces the length. You can refer to the pattern for the circumference of the arm or you can measure your child's arm circumference if you have that privilege. And I iron these bands in half so the raw edges are touching. I also cut two pieces of piping to fit and trimmed up quarter inch again like I did with before with the collar and sewed it to the bottom of the sleeve. Then I took that piece of folded bias band and matched raw edges together and sewed that in place. I sewed it in place with the sleeve side facing up so I could go right along the previous piping stitches. After removing the gather threads, I trimmed up that seam so the band could fold around and be hand stitched to the wrong side of the sleeve later on. As you know, I like to do all my hand sewing at the end. For now, I just make sure the folded end of that band stay folded. And then I join the sleeve together using French seams. And I have a detailed video on how to do French seams that I'll link below. So now, you can gather the top of that sleeve until it fits the armhole opening. Before I stitch in the sleeve to the dress, I basted the lining in place just to make sure those folded edges stay folded. It's just one less thing to think about. And then I pinned the sleeve to the dress with right sides together and sewed the sleeve in place. I know that inserted sleeves aren't the most fun, but this one is easy since it's gathered. Just sew a little bit at a time. It's only a few inches before getting the entire thing done. Just be patient. It won't last forever. A little bit of a time, turn. A little bit of a time, turn. A little bit of time. You get the idea. Then I trimmed up that seam and took it to my machine so I can close those raw edges with a zigzag. You could also use a serger if you wish. And you are almost done at this point. Just got to close that back up. Now remember, both salvage edges are still attached and I figured it didn't make much sense to cut them off, so I just left them there. I did cut a slit where the package should end and I took it to my machine and sewed below the slit. Then I turned the dress up at the hem about half an inch and ironed that all the way around and then again about four inches and ironed that all the way around. So once all your hand sewing and smocking is done, you'll have a finished garment that looks something like this. This is a Christmas version in the red gingham dress, and Audrey turned six month old on Christmas Day, and she's wearing the six month size yoke. And now here's an Easter or a spring version. Seriously, you can make this dress in so many different ways with so many different embellishments and fabric combinations. I just love the lack of seams on the side. It looks so clean, and for that matter, the yoke section takes up such little fabric. It's a good opportunity to use Liberty of London or some other expensive fabric you've been eyeing but your pocketbook has told you no <laughs> anywho i hope all that was helpful if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and i will do my best to answer them as always i appreciate y'all for watching and i hope to catch y'all next time